Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at AMC Entertainment, tickets for AMC and Ape. In this video, we are going to be looking at $800 million worth of FTDs created for Ape back in August, and how that number is even bigger now, and how firms are colluding together in order to create more pressure for Ape. We're going to be looking at data which supports that. We're also going to be looking at just the overall market and many more in this video, so make sure you guys watch until the very end. As always, we're going to start with the chart for AMC and Ape. So if we take a look at AMC right now, AMC today is actually closing at a flat 0%. So there was no movement in terms of up or down in, in terms of where we closed at $8.17 again. And this is the pressure we're seeing for AMC right now. Yesterday, we saw very large volume, which took us all the way above a 84, but yet we closed below it. And today again, we tried to close the in between 824 and 884. And this is what we talked about in terms of before the week even started of where we were gonna see AMC. And I talked about how it's very likely we're gonna see the price just close below the 824 area. And because we're looking for that pullback towards um, kind of this 772 zone, but this is what we have. And again, guys, make sure you watch the Sunday outlet video so you make to make sure you don't miss out. But for AMC right now, it's very good where we closed because we actually have a week where we closed above the 772 and 762 zone. So that is a very good indication. Now, of course, what would have been better is if we closed between 824 and 884. Now, because we didn't, I do strongly think that next week is going to be a contest of actually closing in between the zone of 824 and 84. So if you want to make sure what to expect and how to prepare for next week make sure you stay tuned for the sunday outlook video all we have to do is click that subscribe button turn the notification bell and you'll be alerted when the sunday outlook video comes out and so for amc in terms of where we closed up this week it's very very good we did of course get a halt yesterday as well which again decreased the buy pressure increased the sell pressure and again today the indecisiveness in terms of buyers want to come in but of course hedge funds don't want us to of course bring the price up and this is what we have with amc but overall still very very good if we take a look at ape on the other hand so ape is up 1.35 percent but again you guys can see the candle is very small now the volume today is actually very very low Low in comparison to the last two days where we had pretty much the third and fourth most biggest volume days for ape now we are 1.35 percent but again i'll be showing more data later on which talks about the increase in of course the ftds how firms are colluding with each other to create more pressure for ape and many more but for ape right now you know we are seeing their oversold territory with the rsi below 30 we are seeing buyers come in it did of course create a low at 0.9 and we did talk about the possible lowest level will be 0.88 as that is a target they want to make ape hit but so far i think it's very hard to understand where ape is going as so far with the last two candles so the friday and thursday what we're seeing despite the fact that we're seeing a long wick is that buyers are coming in sellers aren't able to actually take control of the overall candle we are definitely seeing them fighting the buyers but they can't take overall control of the candles and we actually may be looking at a breakout if it continues to do so where sellers continue applying pressure but the buyers will trump that and again hit the stop loss for these short sellers. But let's take a look at some of the news. So the first thing we have is this, almost $800 million worth of FTDs from the 24th to the 31st of August alone, which is like 100 million shares of Ape. It's December now and it never stopped. And according to Yahoo, Ape was the most shortest stock the other day. Now, this is of course the first thing. So two things, when Ape had this amount of FTDs in, um, you know, needed to be settled and covered, Ape wasn't the number one most shortest stock on Yahoo or at all. But going in recently, and we've covered this on the channel, Ape was the most shorted stock, as we guys can see on this particular picture, um, for Ape and on Yahoo in terms of the most shortest stock. And so when you understand that, we can understand that realistically, there is more FTDs now than there was back in the 24th to the 31st of August. And if those numbers back then was looking at $800 million worth, around 100 million shares, it's very likely we are looking at an even higher amount right now. And again, that is the pressure we are seeing for Ape. And so once we are, of course, seeing AMC do well and Ape isn't doing well, I think it's because that they want people to sell off Ape because by selling off Ape, they are able to, of course, buy these FTDs, buy these shares to cover the FTDs. And in the off chance of 
a conversion from Ape to AMC. They are then able to also cover the AMC shares. I think it's a tactic that they are using in order to push down AMC. Because if you take a look at this from Avi, I pointed out to someone that I saw indications that suggested the institutions dumped their Ape shares, causing Ape to plummet. I think those shares were used for shorts to cover, then they continue to shorting it. I will look more into this. So again, there is more to of course be covered, but what we're seeing here is essentially Firms who originally owned Ape shares, meaning that they owned AMC shares, and so of course they got Ape shares, actually sold off their shares so that shorts are able to buy real existing shares in order to be covering for their shorts. What that does is, of course, get them out of the position that they're in, of course, get them out of this FTD positions that they were in. And by doing so, they are then able to now short again on a and what it does is of course it creates that snowball effect where essentially what we could be seeing and you and actually looking at the chart even to describe it is real firms sells real shares of ape bring the price down and the short starts cover which is why we see the price go back up why we see that pullback but once they cover they then decide to apply more pressure and then push the price down even more and then during this time it creates people Again, not firms anymore, but actual real retail investors to get rid of their real shares as well, which pushes the price down even more. And so I think that was something that they are doing. Comment down below what you guys think about that. Again, we have seen many ways of how firms work together in order to manipulate the price for Ape, in order to flush out the retails and make the retails panic. Because if you take a look at this as well, on the short side, the latest Morningstar data indicates that 50.6 million, uh, 50.67 million Ape shares were being shorted through mid-November, an increase of more than 10 million shares compared to the previous month. This increase in demand for shorting Ape is also reflected in the stock borrowing market. Fees to borrow Ape are currently at all-time highs, averaging a rate of 10% annualized. And so when you look at this, and the first thing you understand is the pressure each month is increasing. Now, if Ape was a share that was going to go down, people are going to get rid of it. Naturally, they don't need to increase the short pressure because people will get rid of their shares as the price goes down. But because of what they need to do, they are applying more and more short pressure as time increases in order to push the price down. And I think that is why, personally for me, understand the importance of ape and what it can do if we also take a look at in terms of the dark market in terms of a dark pool for off exchange we can see that just today the off exchange data was 71.8 percent now if we were to add, of course add up SIBO we're looking at over 80 percent and that is on a day where ape is only up 1.35 percent we actually don't have as much volume as we did in comparison to yesterday and the day before that but yet what they don't want to see for ape is that Ape recover, that Ape breaks out, that Ape gets back up to that $1 mark. They're trying, of course, their utmost best in order to keep the price of Ape below $1 right now to create that fear that Ape is going to be useless and to create the incentive for everyone to get rid of the Ape shares. And I think that it's very indica indicate, very clear to indicate how you know ape is being manipulated right now in the market if we take a look at the short to borrow and uh, the cost to borrow for amc we can see that cost to borrow right now for amc along with ape is very high for amc it's at 37.48 percent and if, again if we take a look at amc share price today like i said with only um with a neutral movement of 0.00 percent but that is with the fact that people are trying their best right now to keep the price down because of the fact that the cost of borrow is so high. Normally with a high cost of borrow, what you're seeing is people are less likely to be shorting shares. And if people are not shorting shares with people buying into AMC, it should naturally push the price of AMC up. But what we're seeing right now is of course, AMC price not moving up despite having buy pressure, meaning that these firms are willing to pay a high amount of money in order to locate shares to then short against AMC to make sure it don't break out above certain zones. And in this case is to make sure AMC don't close in between the zones of 824 and 884, because if we are able to close into the zone for technical analysis going into the next few weeks, it will be very fatal for them as we're seeing a pivotal movement for AMC right now. And with AMC price going up higher and higher, it's only going to increase the cost to borrow for AMC short sellers. And again, it's only going to damage their short positions even more. If you take a look at this, investor risk appetite all time lows. One of the few reasons I believe we continue higher after consolidation, bears keep pushing the agenda that everyone is at multi month long side exposure on their portfolios, yet data keep refuting that reality is most funds are still short. And in this case, 
because the fact that they're short on AMC, they do not want to see AMC actually go up. They want to see AMC low. And that's why when they're saying the position is bouncing against them, when AMC is actually increasing and more long buyers are coming in, they are willing to pay large amounts in order to push the price down for AMC. Anyway, guys, comment down below what you guys think about AMC in this current situation. Comment down below what you guys are personally doing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to press that like and subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys next time.